What is up team, it's Browncoat from Coral Cottage here and bringing you a, a lightning fast review for Starlink Battle for Atlas. So Starlink, it's a uh, toys to life game and it's definitely aimed at that um, pre-teen, early teenage sort of age bracket. It's a wee bit complicated in places for probably really little kids, but don't get me wrong, they'll still have a great time. And to be fair, there's enough guts in this game that even game appearance will quite happily sit down muck about with the toys and just enjoy the game there's actually plenty to grind away on so to have you uh, a bit of an appreciation of what the game is think skylanders crossed with no man's sky crossed with diablo and grinding for chests and getting loot and upgrades and that sort of stuff so that's kind of the game uh, it's built around that pretty well known ubisoft open world model so you get a map you can't see it you have to progress through uh, opening up checkpoints and outposts to then highlight the map and what areas you need to go to. The overall goal of the game is to essentially, um, in great space sci-fi opera fashion, stop the evil legion from controlling the universe of Atlas, which universe and Atlas, I'm not quite sure how that terminology works together, but anyway, that's what they called it. And you have to find ways to uh, drop the control of the legion on each planet to the point where you can then go and attack their major dreadnought um, and bring that down. It's actually a, a cool game loop. It gets maybe a wee bit repetitive, but you can always jump off onto one of the side missions and grind away on that. There's actually plenty to keep you sidetracked. It's not just a, a very linear sort of progression. You can work away on all sorts of good stuff. So um, once you've dropped the control of a planet, you attack the Dreadnought, and as you progress through the game, you'll keep picking up loot uh, in the form of upgrades for your weapon systems. You upgrade your weapons, and by the end of the game, you're OP. So just kind of to bring the toys to life thing into a clearer picture for you. You have these toys, they mount on top of the controller and you can at any point whip off the guns that sit on each wing and put different guns on. You can change the pilot out, the pilots have their own skills tree, their own leveling system. The more you use them, the more powerful they get. Um, you can change the wings out, the wings give different buffs as in speed, damage, that kind of thing. And then inside the game's mechanics, combat is a simple combo based system. So if you've got an enemy who's fire based, if you attack him with fire, it'll do hardly any damage or um, none at all, where you need to find the opposite of whatever that form factor of enemy is. And the enemy variation is not massive, but it's, there's enough there to keep you guessing and keep you changing uh, what sort of uh, ammo type and weapons you're putting out there. And then there's puzzles, uh, platforming puzzles, elemental puzzles, that sort of thing. So you absolutely have to keep it, an eye on what damage you're doing and it's an opportunity, especially with little kids, change the guns out and then you can move on to the next uh, objective. Uh, now there's no online, uh, it's split screen is the only form of co-op. And uh, look, that's great with kids. Um, I have had a bit of a run with my kids and it was good fun. The vertical um, co-op screen does mean for what is essentially a, a spaceship shooter, your field of view is really limited. So it, it kind of detracts from the fun. You've got to be getting the most out of it as just spending time with your kids there as opposed to trying to get the most out of the game. My only issue with the game, and it's still a wee bit uncertain yet because the toys and stuff are not coming out till the end of the week, but based on my research, they are pretty pricey. Uh, in New Zealand, you're talking about 60 bucks for a ship. Um, if you want to get the open uh, pack or the starter pack, it's about 120 bucks. It gives you one ship and the adapter uh, and the game. Um, but for another 30 bucks, if you don't want the actual physical ships, you could buy the digital deluxe version and have all the ships, all the pilots, all the guns, but you don't have the cool toys to muck around with. So it's a bit of a balancing act and I'd absolutely recommend you do a bit of research. This game is geared towards kids, but there is, as I said, enough there for an adult gamer to have a good time. And I've certainly enjoyed my time with it. It's that Saturday morning cartoon. It's the cool spacey toys. And to be fair, if I could drag my boy away from Destiny for a moment, then um, I think he'd enjoy it as well. 
All right, that's enough from me. I hope you've enjoyed the review, and make sure you swing past Cory Cottage and even consider a bit of a subscription or a like. All right, thanks very much. Bye.